1460, the new WXBR. You are listening to the Metro South Morning Show. PM in the AM, Peter Zimbor and Mike Pava here with you on this Monday morning. Mike, you know where you and I will be tomorrow night. I'm going. Are you going? I'll be there. All right. Tomorrow night at the Moakley Auditorium on the campus of Bridgewater State University at 6.30 p.m. It is the premiere of the brand new documentary, The Culture, a documentary on guns in America. It's a new film by award-winning director Nubi Rateau, who is also currently the director of communications for Mayor Bill Carpenter in Brockton. And joining us right now in studio is the one and only Nubi Rateau to discuss. Nubi, good morning and welcome to the program. Two-time award-winning, now six-time nominated uh, new Beretto. But who's counting? It sounds like you are counting. Yes, I am counting. Do you get offended if people do not introduce you as the two-time award-winning director, Nubi Rateau? Two no. Ta- I- two-time award-winning, six-time nominated director, Nubi Rateau. I would like to refer to as the award-winning Nubi Rateau. And the two-time award-winning doesn't, doesn't, I don't care. Doesn't roll much. off the tongue quite as well? No, but the award-winning Nubi Rateau, yes, I'd, I'd like to be worth it. Once he hits that. 10 awards, then he'll be like, the 10 time award <laughs> Two is, some, two's not enough. It's going to be It's higher. something about numbers ending in zeros, right? <laughs> well, it's The Culture, a documentary on guns in America, which premieres tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. at the Moakley Auditorium on the campus of Bridgewater State University. First off, what led to you to delve into this subject matter for your next documentary film? Well, Pete, I think it rolls into what's going on tonight, um, which is the gun violence listening tour, which is going on tonight at 6 p.m. at the Brockton War Memorial. Um, the, we have we have a gun problem in this country. Um, just a reminder tonight, that's at uh, 6 p.m. over at the War Memorial Building. Um, and, 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 you know, th- th- this documentary tomorrow talks about the problems that the meeting is talking about today. Is that, um, you know, when Newtown happened in Sandy Hook, um, it was probably around like, I, I heard the news, I think around like 1 o'clock. I was at BCA at the time. And then I, I put on the TV, and I was just really, really pissed off. I was really upset about, you know, the the amount of mass shootings we're having. And then, you know, when it comes down to a whole class being wiped out, I just, I just felt really, really down. And then um, you know, I was texting um, Gwen Knowles, and I was texting Conan Harris, and I said, you know, guys, I'm really thinking about doing a documentary on gun violence. And then Peter hit me. I'm like, you know, why, why am I so upset about this mass shooting, which is devastating, it's horrible, it's sick, but... There's a there's a there's a genocide going on in the urban community. How come that doesn't get me upset? So you know, I thought to myself, you know, we got a serious problem with our culture. We got a real serious problem with our culture where where certain things are normalized. It seems like, and then other things, you know, there's an outrage, and we gotta look ourselves in the mirror. And that starts with me. So I said, you know what? Let, let's do a documentary, and we're talking about what to call it. You know, we're first gonna call it Second Amendment. We're first gonna call it Shot Twice. And I talked to the guys. I'm like, you know what? Let's let's call it the culture because I don't think it's necessarily a gun problem. I think it's a people problem. It's a culture problem. So that's where we got the name, the culture, from. That's where they all, that's where I got started. So it's a people problem. Guns in itself, not necessarily the problem. It's the way in which people are using them, I suppose. I think so. And that's that's what I got. You know, it's funny going to this documentary, Peter. Um, a lot of times I go into the documentary, you know, with with, with one p- opinion in mind. Before I started this documentary, um, I hated guns. Okay, um, I, I, um, I I still don't like guns per se, but I thought this was more of a gun problem. After the documentary, which is a lot of good opinions that I respect both, my opinion is swayed, and I really think it's a it's it's a problem with with us as people. Well, let's you, talk about this because you disclosed on our airwaves once before that your view on guns was just they shouldn't be allowed. Period at all and you've since changed because i think even then you would have recognized that that's not exactly a realistic goal well it's not realistic and, and i said that i mean uh, am i am i going to go out and get a few guns after this documentary no that, that i just that's just not my thing but after this documentary you know i've, I've really noticed you know whether you know if, if your heart is set to kill somebody here's the problem peter is that we don't value life i think that's that's our problem where you know there was a, a, a case um, uh, where, where someone stepped on someone's shoe in Boston. That person lost their life. And they weren't shot. They were stabbed with a knife. Okay? So if your heart is set to get if, if you don't change what's in your heart and, 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 and how to problem solve, ultimately, you could create harm, whatever. If you're out at the movies 
and someone steps on your shoe, let, let it, it go. slide. <laughs> Why spend the next 20 years in jail? Because someone oh smudged God, your puma. puma. I quote Chris Rock. Maybe that's what Chris Rock got the line from. I don't know. How do you explain that in court? Well, what happened, sir? Well, you know what? He stepped on my shoe, and we can't have that in this country. We just can't have it. So I, I, I wiped him out. Like, how do you explain that one? Not the next with a gun, but he stabbed him to death. Yeah. So how it's not a gun problem. It's a culture problem, you're saying. My opinion, and I respect other people's opinion because there's people in the documentary where, you know, they've had family members who've been murdered and think a different way, and I respect it, and, 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 I, was, and, and I was probably on their side before the documentary started. But really looking at the interviews and you know michael graham was on a doc, uh, documentary who was, he was amazing our very own michael graham michael afternoons graham. here at wxpr 12 to 3 exactly he you know he unfortunately can't make it um tomorrow he, he wrote me a nice little email but um you know, I, i'm definitely um he's definitely gonna help me promote it for the future tours and everything so i was on their side but one, one thing i noticed that you know what ultimately you know it, it, it's something if someone has a problem and you don't know how to problem solve that's more the problem than getting the gun. Now, having said that, it's easier to kill someone with the gun than a knife. So let's just say hypothetically, you wiped out all the guns in the world. Okay, rather than a hundred murders, you might have eighty-seven murders. That's that's that that's how I think it'll, it'll limit the problem. As opposed to if you teach someone how to problem solve and how to fix problems without getting it, as opposed to a hundred murders, you might have three. So what's more effective? That's the way I see it. Tell us about some of the other people you have featured in this documentary outside of the aforementioned Michael Graham. We have Tony O'Brien in the documentary. Um, he's actually a, he used to be a frequent guest on Ron's show. I'm not sure if he's still on. He still pops in from time to time. Uh, Tony O'Brien noted a local political type here in the Brockton area who also is a former Navy SEAL. Yes. So, to, to Tony's in the actually former um, county commissioner, I believe. Yes. So, Tony's on the film, Tony O'Brien. Then we have um, Dominic Russell, who played basketball in 2000. Um, in six, um, uh, didn't play in 2007. For and, Brockton High, right? For Brockton High. Um, his story is, is told in, in the documentary. A uh, very good friend of mine, Dominic Russell. It's funny, um, you know, each documentary I do, Peter, there's always um, a personal touch to it because it's someone, you know, I happen to be really close with who, who tells me their story. And, and I, in, a, in a sense, it's, I almost do the documentary for them. I'm like, I want to do justice to their story. The first when I did one on drugs, it was a good friend of mine who was raped, um, and, and I said I was going to do justice to her story. The, the father documented a good friend of mine um, named Anthony Goss, you know, lived a, a tough life growing up without a father and who really became a role model in the Bridgewater State community, a role model to me. So, you know, I kind of dedicated the documentary to him. This one is, is for Dominique, um, very good friend of mine. Uh, and then senior year, I, I remember I told him, when I graduated, I said, Dominic, this is your year. This is your year to dominate. And then, um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But uh, his story is an excellent story. And, um, you know, you'll see it tomorrow. So, Dominic Russell is a Brockton name in the film. We have um, Tony O'Brien. John Williams is one of the um, people in the film. We actually get him trying to get his gun license. Um, so, we'll find out if he, if he got the gun license or not. Um, because he's a former, uh, a former felon. So, he's trying to get his gun license. But he has no gun charges. So we follow him trying to get the, the process of getting his gun license. Um, who else from Brockton? We have a uh, counselor at large, Shana Barnes, is on the documentary. She's one of the narrators. And in terms of Brockton people, I think that's actually it. We did a lot of filming in Boston as well as in Brockton. Uh, probably more filming in Boston this documentary than we did, did in Brockton. I'd probably say a good you know, 75% of the film was filmed in Roxbury in, in, in Boston. Now, when you ask people about guns in america it elicits very passionate responses it seems like the only people willing to speak up and have an opinion on guns is people that have a really strong feeling one way or another on both extremes there's the nra and then there's the no guns allowed crew tell us about some of the different reactions and the juxtaposition between some of the opinions of people in your film well i think um you know it's funny peter when you really this documentary what the reason why i enjoy it so much and i enjoy all my documentaries but I'm really proud of this one because we really get a, a an opinion of both sides and both strong, poignant opinions. Um, and Peter, can you repeat the question again? Tell us about some of the different opinions that people have in your documentary and how they staunchly oppose one another. Yeah, so um, Reverend Tim Allen's in a documentary now. He's actually very known in the Brock community. He does a lot of work with um, 
with Nancy Lieberg, and um, he's a uh, you know, of course, he's a he's a pastor at his church, and you know, his his whole thing during the whole documentary is that you know, if you're not spiritually, um, you know, on, on a level in terms of respecting human life, it doesn't really matter. And then you get the opposite side of, you know, uh, Michael Graham, who says, you know what, you know, if everyone had a gun, it, it, you know, this place would be, it'd be a very peaceful environment. You know, he, he's a fan of giving everyone guns. Everyone should have a gun. So this, that starts your know, difference. And then there's a person who were unfortunately was a murder in her family. She feels like guns just give you an excuse not to problem solve. So you have, you know, the gun as the excuse not to problem solve. You have the gun, which is the, which is a good reason why, you know, if everyone have a, if everyone in the inner city had a gun, then there wouldn't be as much drug dealers. There wouldn't be as, as much murders. So there's a, there's a distinct side between the two. So what I try to do is try to bring a happy medium in the middle. You know, I firmly believe, okay, let's not eliminate our guns, but do you need an, do you need an AR-15? Do you need a machine gun? You don't need a machine gun. You don't need one. I mean, you're not going to need a machine gun to kill a deer. That's illegal. So I, I think it's a happy medium that we can find. You know, you don't need an AR-15. Why would you need that for? Some people say you need an AR-15 because the government has an AR-15. I mean, I'm not so sure the government's going to come to your house, knock down your door, and, and, and shoot up everybody. Well, there is an argument that the Second Amendment was created in order to prevent – help so me over, out with this one. Overthrow the government. That, that if need be, you can violently overthrow the government because you would not want to be subject to tyranny the right. way that – uh, the s colonial folks were in, you know, the pre-United States time of colonial times here in this country, mm -hmm. or what would become this country. And I agree, but let me ask you guys this question. Has that ever happened? No. Since the revolution? We're talking about, you know, 1776. Has that ever happened where we want to overthrow the government? Well, some I mean, people might. Not America yet. is not, not yet. perfect. <laughs> America is not perfect. But relatively speaking... I mean, that's why we have a democracy. But, but it, we but, elect but, people but, who... But I, I think that, and I'm, I'm not taking position here, but I'm just saying that people who feel that way would say it hasn't happened yet because we, they know that we have rights to prevent them from doing so. Do you understand what I'm saying? I agree. But we don't need military-style weapons. Like, someone used an example. Um, and actually, I didn't show in the document. It was, it was an outtake where, um, you know, the unfortunate bombers in Boston Marathon, where the city was shut down. And it was shut down for a good reason to try to get, you know, these people who, who, who killed um, uh, the people in, in the Boston bombing. But he said, what if they shut down the city for a cause that the residents didn't agree with? You would need a weapon. So it makes that argument. I disagree because that's never happened. It's never happened where someone, someone collectively made a stupid decision. And people were just said, OK, that's fine. Now, granted, you can look at history, you know, things like, unfortunately, like the Holocaust and stuff like that. But that's never happened, okay, in America right now. Of course, the civil rights movement and stuff like that. That's something different. But I'm talking about now, where we have those rights and we have those laws in place, I don't see that happening. You could argue, yeah, the Holocaust. You could argue the civil rights movement, the Jim Crow laws. Yeah, I could agree with that in terms of everyone having a gun to protect themselves. But now, we have laws against that. Those though that sacrifice started those laws where things like that, even though they may happen, but it's not as consistent. That's just my opinion. Well, so far I have not had to use my AK, so today has been a good day. We're chatting with Nubi Rito here on AM fourteen sixty, the new WXBR PM in the AM Peter Zimbor and Mike Paver. The culture, the documentary, premieres tomorrow night at the Moakley Auditorium at Bridgewater State College. The film begins at six thirty. We advise people to get there uh, significantly earlier around six o'clock because seating will be limited. Nubi, why do you think that guns is such a hot topic right now? It seems like the cool topic, and it seems like the cool stance to take is no guns allowed. I'll give you an example real quick. Right. 90 Snoop Dogg. Rat-a-tat-tat, because -tat, I never hesitate to put a dude on his back. 2013, 2014 Snoop Dogg. No guns allowed. Why is it cool to have that position at this point in time? About having no guns? Yes. Well, before I answer that question, let me just back it up a little bit. Sure. I may have a point about the civil rights movement and about, you know, having guns that time may be a good idea. But I'm thinking about it right now. That civil rights movement, what caused that change was a nonviolent movement, actually. 
the violent movement actually sparked and, and, and eventually, you know, made things worse. That non-violent movement by Martin Luther King, where it was no guns, and Martin Luther King actually owned a gun, but never used it, that sparked the change. So, let me just, in terms of what you're talking about now, why, why guns, it's, it's, it's the cool thing right now, Peter. You know, it's, it's a cool thing to say, you know, you know, guns for nobody, and, you know, guns, uh, guns are bad, and so forth. Guns are not bad, okay? Guns are not a bad thing. Guns are, it's just, it's like a table. It's like a microphone. It's a thing. Guns are not the problem. It's the mindset behind the gun. And I think now with the mass shootings, you know, between Virginia Tech, you know, Sandy Hook, Colorado, you know, it, it you know, the, the media plays this perception that, you know, the gun is the problem. I don't think the gun's the problem. I think during those mass shootings, the problem was mental health, not ad- identifying that someone has a mental health problem. And then they're playing video games and, and so forth and, 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 and stuff like that. I mean, you got the guy in Sandy Hook was playing Halo and, and things like that. That's that's more the problem than the actual gun per se. Do you think that violent video games play into play into this? Suburban neighborhoods, I think so. Here's why. Because in, you live in a city like we do in Brockton, in, or in Boston and Roxbury, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we hear stuff that happens in terms of, of gun violence. You know, that, that stuff that stuff happens. I think a lot of times in a suburban neighborhood, you know, it it doesn't happen. So a video game puts you into that fantasy world sometimes of, of, of a life that is not real to them. So I think that contributes to, I think, why we see a lot of mass shootings in suburban neighborhoods. It doesn't happen a lot. So... You want to go into this fantasy world, so you play the video games, you watch the movies. So I think it affects suburban neighborhoods more. In the inner city, you know, you get stuff like crime and shootings, unfortunately. So, you know, something like grabbing a gun and, 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 and you know, and mass shootings doesn't happen as much in the urban neighborhood because that, ha- you know, that crime happens in the inner city. That's just, you live in a city, crime is going to happen. In a suburban neighborhood, it's a little different. So I, I think um, it, it affects movies and video games affect suburban neighborhoods more than it does in the inner city. If you want to be a cool, indie, folk, socially conscious singer-songwriter or a cool, reggae, rap, socially conscious guy, do you know what you are circa 2014? You've got to be pro-gay marriage, you've got to be pro-marijuana, and anti-gun. I feel like those are the three things that are like the cool things at the moment. Yeah. Hey, Peter, what do you think? I mean, am I, am I way off on this? Way off on what? In terms of um, suburban gun culture and urban gun culture and, and the influence of video games and movies. I haven't studied it as much as you, but I would venture and say that I don't buy into the whole violent video games play, plays into real life. Because I, I think that people can separate fantasy from reality. And if you can't, you already have a problem. And if you can't, you already have a problem. Exactly. Once again, we're chatting with New Bruto here on AM 1460, the new WXBR. The culture premieres on the campus of Bridgewater State University tomorrow night. It'll be interesting to see the various interviews you conducted with various people in the film in relation to gun culture in the United States. Michael Graham's philosophy is a little bit interesting to me, as you described it. He wants everyone to have guns, and I understand the philosophy behind it. If everyone has guns, it evens out the playing field. With that being said, at some point, I think something would go awry if yeah, everybody had a gun. Sounds like a free-for-all. I, 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 I get the philosophy, but I think that it might be better in theory than it is in practice. At some point, something really bad's going to happen because everyone has a gun. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I really haven't thought it through, but upon hearing it, that's my initial feeling. Yeah, I mean, Graham is um, he's way on the other side, you know, and he makes some really excellent points in the documentary. I mean, he does make some really great points, but, in, in, you know, I, I don't agree that everyone in the hood should have a gun. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 I mean, I, I, I just don't think, that's, I don't think that's a good idea. We're chatting with Nubi Ruto. Nubi, who did you not speak to in this documentary that you would have liked to have spoken to? You know, Peter, I really can't think of anyone. Um... There's two people not in this movie that have popped in my head during the course of this interview. I really, I really can't think of anyone per se. I mean, I think we really got every perspective. We got the victim. We got the the family member, the victim. We got the conservative. We got, you know, we got a person who was shot 15 times in this documentary. 15 times, unbelievable. He has an incredible story. Um, so I think it's more than 50 cent got shot. Yeah, you know, he, I mean, he has no reason to be alive. I mean, 15 times, you know, but he's doing a lot of good stuff in the community right now. Two people that I think would have been good for this film. 
one, Ted Nugent. Yes, Ted Nugent, yes. Ted Nugent would have been great who did our show last summer. And Mike, tell me if you remember this guy, newbie. Tell me if you remember this guy. Do you remember the Asian guy that owned the gun shop in Los Angeles during the L.A. riots? When people started looting, that guy protected his store. He just took out his gun, all this ammunition, <laughs> and started shooting at people when they tried to rob his store. I'd love to hear what that guy has to say about guns in America. I think he's pro-guns. What about, <laughs> what about Bernie Getz? You could have Bernie Getz. We, we, this, 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 we could do an entire sequel, Nobi. Yeah, Nobi he, travels the country talking to people about guns. It's a hot issue. It's funny about this documentary, Peter, is that um, in every documentary that I've done so far, relatively speaking, people have agreed. The, the, when we did the drug documentary, people more or less agreed that drugs are bad. Okay? It's just how do, how do you eliminate it? There's different ways of doing that, but people agree that you know they want to limit kids and adults with, with drugs. Fatherhood, people agree, you need to be there for your kids. This gun documentary, there's some, distant, there's some distinct opinions. Some people generally believe you need a gun to protect yourself. Some people generally believe that, you know, gun, guns are bad, you know, and it's funny, the people who are anti-gun are the people who've been shot. People who've been shot. So, people who are pro-guns, while well, I've noticed in the documentary, you know, they, you know, they, they weren't victims. So, but then you got, you know, people like, uh, you know, Tony uh, O'Brien, who's a Navy SEAL, you know, so. What's well, Tony O'Brien's position? I don't know if you disclosed that yet. Well, Tony, you know, it's funny. Um, Tony's a little more in the middle. Um, Tony, um, you know, he's, he's pro guns, but um, he, he's, he, he makes a very clear point that video games is an issue in our community. And he feels like that's, that's a, a, a factor, not the deciding factor, but that's a factor why we see so many mass shootings. So, you know, he, he's conservative in terms of the actual ownership of the gun, but, you know, liberal in terms of, you know, maybe we should kind of censor what we see on TV. Oh, that's, that's, that's not liberal. That's horrible. He wants to censor TV and video games. Yes. Oh, that's a free speech issue. That's an entirely different thing. Yes. So, I mean, it's a lot of different opinions, man. I mean, it's, it's not, this document is not, cutthroat one way you know we really really uh do a fantastic job in terms of you know really getting the two sides and you make the decision and i'll tell you what peter i'm not gonna reveal the last five minutes of the documentary uh it's five to ten minutes it's probably the most um one of the most emotional and most real discussions someone's ever had about guns i mean taking a look at the race issue in the black community with, with black kids killing young black kids and how the media perceives it. I think that's one of the most powerful parts in the documentary. Um, so I'm not going to reveal the whole thing, but really one of the most honest, honest discussions about guns in this country. It's not just one side, you know, it's, we talk about urban, suburban, liberal, conservative. It's just an honest dialogue about guns and one of the first documentaries I think of its kind. By the way, as I refer to Tony O'Brien's position on something that Newbie is paraphrasing as horrible, he is welcome to come on the show and defend himself if he'd like to at some point. Uh, he's not one. He's not sure for words, so I'm pretty sure he'll be happy to come on. The Culture premieres at the Moakley Auditorium on the campus of Bridgewater State University tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m., a documentary on guns in America from award-winning director Newbie Doors Rattel. open at 6, p Peter, so make sure you, you get there. We start the film at 6.30, but the doors open at 6. You start right on the dot, right? So get there early. Don't be late. We don't play, we don't play around. We, oh, doors open at 6, so get there at 6 o'clock. If you could get there a little earlier, we packed house pretty quickly. Mike Paver and myself will be the newbie. You mind sticking around for another segment with us? I will. Stick with us here in the Metro South Morning Show, PM in the AM. Mike Pave is going to fill you in on what's happening in the Peter, area. Can I mention one thing, though? I, I apologize. We've got a whole other segment. Sure. <laughs> I'm, um, one thing I did mention was actually the idea of school community person, um, Ray Henningsen. And, and um, we want everyone to bring a, a canned good to the event. It's a free event. You get free food. If everyone could bring canned good, we're going to donate that to Project Garden Angels, um, Rosie Brown's um, nonprofit. So if everyone could bring a canned good, it's all we want you to bring canned good at this event. We'd appreciate it. Stick with us here on the Metro South Morning Show, PM in the AM. We'll be back with more with Newbie Rateau after this news update. And we're back here on the Metro South Morning Show, PM in the AM. Peter Zimbor and Mike Pave here with you on this Monday morning. Joined in studio by Newbie Rateau, once again, award-winning film director. His film, The Culture, a documentary on guns in America, premieres tomorrow night at the Moakley Auditorium on the campus of Bridgewater State University. Film begins at 6.30, doors open at 6 p.m. Make sure you check that out. Mike Pave and myself will be there. Outside of being an award winning director newbie you are the current director of communications for mayor bill carpenter in the city of brockton and tonight you have an event 
uh, in conjunction with your job at City Hall that sort of ties into the subject matter of this documentary, The Culture. It's a gun violence listening tour at the War Memorial Building in Brockton tonight at 6 p.m. Tell us exactly what the purpose of this is and who will be there and what's it all about. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter will be there along with uh, State Rep Mike Brady. Um, Hank Naughton will be there as well. Um, and, and, and basically, you know, want to get feedback from... Um, from from the residents of the city of Brockton, you know, uh, about, you know, how do how do we rid this gun problem in the inner city? Um, so it's just, you know, it's it's just a listening tour just to hear different ideas, you know, because one thing I've noticed, Peter, um, so that's again at six, that's six o'clock tonight at the War Memorial Building, is that, you know, what, what I've noticed when I'm working in City Hall, you know, sometimes you're in the office and then it, it's so great to, you know, get out the office and, and really hear the opinions of, of the residents because, you know, when you're in the office, you know, you, you're focused on, you know, whether you're taking care of emails, trying to set up different events, but it, it always keeps you humble. It always keeps you, you know, when, when you when you talk to the residents and, and, and hear their concerns. So you can make a legislation, you can make, you know, whatever you want, whatever type of law you want, but you always want to get the opinion of the people because ultimately that's what you're going to affect. So that's what this, this um, this listening tour is all about to, to really, you know, sit back and hear what the residents have to say, um, their concerns, their questions ab- um, ab- about, you know, guns and the access to guns. So that's going to be tonight, 8 p.m. at the War Memorial Building. No, I mean, what, 8 p.m., sorry, 6 p.m. 6 War p.m. Memorial. to 8 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Now, what brought about this particular event? And was there any events in particular that has happened in Brockton which led to you guys at City Hall wanting to have this event and this listening session? Well, the office, um, Mike Saber and Mike Brady, um, you know, spearheaded this. Um, but ultimately, Peter, we live in a city. We live in a city, so this is inherently going to be a problem. So, I mean, it's not just a Brockton problem. It's a city problem, you know, where different cities are. And we look at Boston. I mean, Boston, I, I, I think, um, had 17 um, – 17 shootings in a matter of like uh, like two weeks. So a ridiculous number like that. So it's a problem that's going on throughout the cities in the state. So what this is basically doing, you know, they want to hear the opinions of the residents about how to combat that and, and suggestions and, and, and questions. I mean, and, and that's all it is. I mean, there was a great form, um, you know, the week before that over at West Junior High. You know, it's good to get um, just the opinions of people who elected you in office and and and, and that's what uh mayor bill carpenter um and mike Breed are committed to do we mentioned that you are the reigning director of communications for mayor bill carpenter like i said reigning like he's a champion or something <laughs> like he, he won a fight to get there uh you enjoying this new position which you've been in for a little more than over a month now peter i love it i love it um it's funny um in december i met with um you know we met as a team uh, myself um Bob Buckley, chief of staff, of course, Mayor Bill Carpenter, and um, the mayor was like, you know, newbie, we're going to make some mistakes on the way. We're going to make some mistakes, but we're going to have a lot of fun doing it, and uh, we're going to, um, you know, we're, you know, we're going to work our butt up, or we're going to, have, you know, we're going to have a good time in terms of making positive change. And Peter, I've made my fair share of mistakes already, but um, but you know, I I love it. I love it. I love meeting different people. Um, you know, we we uh, you know, we have the people who I've met already in the mayor's office are people I probably would have never even encountered with. Um, you know, just, you know, I know Brooke and Brock give me access, you know, I met different people, but you know, we're just, I mean, in the, in just in terms of politicians, um, you know, different owners of different companies working in small businesses on different things. It's just a really, really humbling feeling that, you know, um, that so many people, you know, are, are, are so willing to help out and so willing to lend a helping hand. So long story short, I love the job. It's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, not too many times where you you get to, you know, leave right at 430, you know, there's, there's going to be some long nights and everything. But at the end of the day, when you get something accomplished, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, government sometimes doesn't work as fast as you want it to do, but when you get something accomplished, um, and, and you're seeing the change, it's, it's, it's exciting. So I'm super excited about the job and, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to make more mistakes. So, but um, but I'm 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 committed, and the whole team's committed to. I'm really making some positive changes. Working in the public sector right now, as opposed to the private sector, there's some interesting things that become public information. Your salary was brought up recently at a city council meeting, and we had someone bring it up in an interview here on our station. Does stuff like that make you feel uncomfortable? Is that a little bit difficult to get used to coming to where you've been? Honestly, coming not from where you've been. Not really, Peter, because. Ultimately, I mean, if you just focus on your job every, every single day, I mean, you let the other stuff take care of it, you know, 
Because if you're too busy worried about that stuff, you're not going to be able to do your job um, in the right way. You know, you know. So I, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at just focusing on what I got to do on a daily basis. And then the other stuff, you know, in, in terms of you know contract, whatever, you know, let that stuff work out. You know, if you, if you're going to stress about that, it's going to affect how you go do your day to day job. So, you know, um, long story, you know, long, you know, short answer to your question is no, that's not affecting me. Um, you know, so I'm just going to continue to be positive, stay positive, and then continue to do my job every day. And then the other stuff, whatever happens, happens. But I'm, I'm focused on, on you know, being the best communication director that, um, that I can be. At a certain point, I thought he was going to say, stay beautiful and count your blessings. Did you not think that for a second, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike? A little mind of Mita. A little mind of Mita. Newbie, uh, this is called a gun violence listening tour. Are there going to be more of these? I mean, it's a tour. There's one. Yeah. It's, this, yeah. it's the world tour, right? If, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's been in different places already, um, in different communities. So Brockton is one of the stops. So um, I believe so. I believe so. Newbie, let's talk about some of the different projects that you mentioned to us back in December when you came, or actually early January when you came on our program right mm -hmm. before you started as the Director of Communications for Mayor Bill Carpenter. You mentioned a number of projects that you would be working on in this new position, including TV shows and things of that nature. Uh, what's the status of those, and what are you currently working on? First TV show, we're actually going to have um, Police Chief Bob Hayden on. Um, we're recording, it's funny, uh, we're... We're looking at um, different names for TV shows, but we'll we'll, we'll have a name probably by today. Uh, we're looking at different names for TV shows. We're looking at you know we looked at City Scoop. We looked at um, uh, what was the other one? PM uh, and the AM's already taken, so I know they wanted <laughs> that one. The time is now with Bill Carpenter. We're looking at a few different names. The time is now with Bill Carpenter. That was, uh, that was actually Fred Fontaine's idea. <laughs> um, he was listening to Rage Against the Machine and said, "I got it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at a few different ideas, but um, yeah, we um. Or the first TV show is going to have um, Police Chief Bob Hayden on it. Uh, we actually did our first um, address. We actually did a mayor's address that we recorded, and we're going to start doing that once the website is going to be up, which will be up by the end of um, February, early March, um, between that week. So we're going to start the weekly videos. The TV show is going to be rocking and rolling. Excellent thing about the TV show, I was actually speaking with Jocelyn Meek, and um, we're actually going to have um, different um, artwork from different students um, as a backdrop for his TV shows. Of course, we'll be recording a segment at BCA. So just to change up the backdrop, we're going to have the artwork from the different kids. For just, you know, just for it can look different. You know, a lot of times we see the Fikas in the, in the, in, in, in the, you know, the, uh, the carpet and everything. We want to change things up a little Every bit. public access show has a Ficus. Yeah. So, you know, we, we don't want to make it too public access -y, you know, so we, uh, we're going to change up the, uh, the backdrop. And actually, I talked to Arnie Danielson. He's all fired up about it, um, I mentioned to him a few weeks ago, and he, he agreed to do it. There's a, a mural on Main Street. Um, I don't know if you guys remember it. It's um, I think it's across from the courthouse. It's a painting of City Hall. It's a huge um, boxer dog. Do you guys know that? Um, it, it's actually in one of the uh, windows. Okay. Um, if you drive by, that's going to be a backdrop for one of his shows. Talk to John Marion. John Marion has a few backdrops at his, um, at his store that he's going to let us use. Hoagie's Hobbies. Um, said we can use some backdrops. So every TV show is going to be a different backdrop. It's going to be a different background. So I think it's going to be exciting. You know, it's going to look different. It's um, definitely you know, when people flip by the channel, they'll see, whoa, whoa, what's going on over here? This looks different. So uh, I think at the very least it will make people stop and watch. And I, I think uh, the content will make people actually listen and, and keep it on the channel. Mike, with them still trying to come up with a name for the mayor's TV show and them not having found one just yet, do you have any suggestions? Because I'm racking mm. my brain for something interesting. Mm. I'm City Scoop with Bill Carpenter, you said, was one possibility. Yep. The Time Is Now with Bill Carpenter. There's a few of them. I'm trying to think. I'm... How about Carpy's Corner? Carpy's Corner. Genius. Carpy's Corner. I'm not sure how I feel about Carpy, though. It's kind of like... Mayor uh, Carpy. Democratic Cowboy calls him Carpy. Carpy. So we, we've, we've kind of jumped on that a little bit. Mayor Carpy. <laughs> Mayor Carpy. Yeah, yeah, he, just, he just decided that. But you got anything, Mike? I can't. I, I'm, I'm thinking of the backdrops. I think we, we should be a nice backdrop for the... Just me and you, right there. Just standing there. <laughs> I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be pretty damn cool. Uh, if I was a human, I wish I was a backdrop. <laughs> you yeah. once told me that if you weren't human, you wish you were a tripod. Or a monopod, rather. Yeah, I wish I was a tripod that turned into a backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I don't know what it means, too. This man's directing well, I wish I was a basement. in that city. <laughs> I wish I was a basement. Why a basement? Because everyone, every guy loves a basement. It's a man cave. It gets cold and damp down there. Not though. really, no. You got a heater. You know, you got you got all your sports posters. You, you know, you can watch your games. Nobody's like, I got a finished basement, Mike. I don't know about you. Yeah. 
I wish I, if I was a human, I'd be a basement. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you have any ideas about show names, I mean, shoot me an email, nratto at cobma.us. Be happy to look at them. Well, once again, that is Newbie Rateau joining us here on AM 1460, the new WXBR. Uh, two events to discuss. The Gun Violence Listening Tour is tonight at the Brockton War Memorial Building. That gets going at 6 p.m. Brockton Mayor Bill Carpenter will be attending, State Rep Mike Brady, and also Hank Naughton. And then tomorrow night at the Moakley Auditorium on the campus of Bridgewater State University, the premiere of Nubi Rateau's new documentary, The Culture, a documentary on guns in America. 6.30 p.m. the film starts. Get there at 6 p.m. and you encourage folks to bring a canned good you mentioned? I don't encourage you. you got to bring a canned good. I, well, he I, demands. I, you have to. I mean, you know, if you can't get a canned good from your house, I mean, come on. Just he does. He doesn't encourage. He demands. How about a good cause here? And who's that going to? Once Project week? Guardian Angels, our Rosie Brown um, nonprofit. Well, Newbie, any final words for our listeners this morning before we let you go? We got some exciting stuff coming up, Peter. Um, Next month, we have March Madness, which uh, Katie Walper and, and the BYC are spearheading. Um, Mayor Carpenter's office is, is sponsoring it. It's going to be similar to um, how Brockton After Dark was in, in March between 6 and 10. Every Saturday in March, there's going to be an open gym um, where people can, you know, kids between 16 and 20 can play basketball. This open gym from 6 to 10, um, o- open running. And the, the only thing is we ask you, guess how much it costs is, guys. Want to guess? Hundred bucks. One dollar. One dollar. All you gotta bring is one dollar. Okay, you can play basketball for four hours, open gym. So it's a beautiful thing. So um the BYC is spearheading that. Um, you know, Bill Carpenter, Mayor Bill Carpenter's office sponsor, we're gonna promote it hard. So between Don't promote s- it too heavily. Everyone's favorite non profit, the NCAA, is gonna come knocking on your door for March Madness. Hey, we we'll, 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 we welcome competition. <laughs> bring it. So I'm um, excited about that. Also working on a few things with the Adult Learning Center. Um, we're going to be having ESL classes on TV. That'll be airing on Broad Community Access. So we're going to record them in March. Um, it probably won't air itself till April. Um, and we'll be running that continuously. I mean, that's something that's not really time sensitive. So really excited about that. The first time where, you know, Broad Community Access, Mayor's Office, and the Adult Learning Center really kind of an all-star team over here putting that together. So we've been working on that the last month or so, and that's uh, pretty much a done deal. So um, a lot of exciting stuff going on, Peter. Really, really excited. So tonight, come out, 6 p.m. Um, for the Gun Violence Listening Tour. And then tomorrow night, um, 6 p.m. at Bridgewater State University, Mokia Auditorium, the documentary about guns. It's funny because... Tonight, the gun listening tour is about the, legis- the legislation aspect of it and, and, and what can we do in terms of changing laws and so forth or enforcing, you know, doing a better job enforcing those laws. Tomorrow, the documentary is about what can we do as, as, as people, as a society, to change that concept of violence. So I think it ties hand in hand. Well, that's Newby Rateau joining us here on the WXBR. Newby, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Newby. You're listening to the Metro South Morning Show PM. Bedman, Bedman. Peter Zimbor, Mike Pava, and the Birdman joining you here on this Monday morning. We'll step aside for a quick break. Mike Pava is going to fill you in with a local news update. Stick with us.